Howdy howdy, my name is John, and this video is a review of the Earth Children series by Gene M. Hall. This review is a non-spoiler review. The Earth Children series contains six books, these six books right here, and follows the adventures of a young woman named Isla in Ice Age Europe. First, I want to talk about some of the negatives of the series, some reasons why some people won't enjoy this series. The first I want to get into is that the author does a lot of info dumping in the, these novels. She did a lot of research into the age of, of the time that she's writing, and like a lot of people who do a lot of research, they want to show off the knowledge that they've accumulated. And all does that in these novels. You can get some very long descriptive passages about the rocks, the plants, and the animal life, which it can be interesting. And certainly I didn't mind it too much. For some people, it will be hard to get through these sections of these novels. The next negative that I wish to bring up is that many of these novels start very slowly, and then they pick up toward the end. Most notably with this, The Valley of Horses, very slow in the beginning, it picks up at the end. The Shelters of Stone, The Plains of Passage, all of these novels have a kind of slow beginning, and, and it can be really, you know, kind of difficult to make yourself push through the beginning of these novels. One of the things that annoyed me the most, and a lot of other people that I've seen reviews for, is how repetitive the author can be. I don't want to know how many times uh, someone remarks how Ayla talks funny because of the way she was brought up. The next negative I wish to bring up is that Ayla tends to be a bit of a superwoman. She can do nearly everything extremely well. The author does make pains to point out in some of the later novels that there are a couple of things that she can't do well. She, she does nearly everything extraordinarily well. This is also true of her eventual love interest. He tends to be a idealistic man. The next negative is that each of these novels contains a large cast of characters, and it can be really difficult to keep them all straight. The, the strategy that I used was to really focus only on the main characters, and then, you know, the Minor characters, they'll show up and they'll do or say something, but usually you don't really need to focus on them. You really only need to focus on the main characters of the novel. The next negative, at least for me as a guy, is that except for the first novel, the other five read a whole lot like a romance novel. It's not my favorite genre. It's not really something I get much enjoyment out of, and it's a minor part of these novels, but still, it's there and it wasn't my favorite. The last negative that I want to bring up is that I think these novels kind of glossed over how difficult life could be in Ice Age Europe. For example, I don't remember anybody dying of appendicitis in these novels. Things that are commonly cured today but then they just wouldn't have had the knowledge or equipment to deal with those problems. The next problem that I had with these novels is that there are a lot of inventions that are invented over the span of these novels, which is probably about 20 years, that in reality would have taken much longer to discover and adapt. Now, with all of those lists of negatives, you may be wondering, why would I bother to read these novels? Well, I think this, this series does several things very well. I mentioned earlier that all did a lot of research into these novels, and here again it shows, and it shows in a very good way. While this is a speculative 
work of fiction, I think it showcases what could be a realistic way of how our ancestors lived in Ice Age Europe, which was about 20 to 30,000 years ago. Think about that. 20 to 30,000 years ago. This was a time period where really humans only had tools made of either stone or, or bone. With only those tools, these novels become a celebration of human achievement. Again, I noticed in my negative section that a lot of these inter, uh, inventions take place over a short period of time, whereas in reality they would have taken place over a longer period of time. But I think it showcases what humans do best. They try new things and they learn to adapt to their environment and then because of their uh, wandering nature, they go and visit other people and they learn from other people how they're doing things. So uh, Ayla doesn't invent everything in the book in these novels. As her and John Delar are traveling, they notice that one culture has learned how to make pottery. They learn how another culture has, disco has discovered a form of coal that can burn. And little by little, these cultures can exchange technology and learn how to make their own lives better. Lastly, I think one of the things that all does best in these novels is showcasing complex human relationships. Now, here again, she doesn't necessarily always do this the best, but with the large cast of characters that she does have, she's able to show how humans interact with one another, both positively and negatively. We come to understand why humans have evolved the way we have. Overall, I would give this series four stars out of five. It definitely has its weaknesses, and it's not going to be for everybody. I think you should give this series a try and see how well you do with it. Now I'm going to rank the novels from my least favorite to my most favorite. My least favorite novel in the series is The Shelter of Stone. I gave this novel three stars. Unfortunately, there's just not really a whole lot that goes on in this novel, at least as far as a plot. A lot of the plot winds up being a retread of the Mammoth Hunters, which for the most part I think done this, uh, done what this novel discusses better. Next is The Plains of Passage. I also gave this novel three stars. The first 500 pages of this novel is very little more than an info dump. You get a lot of description of the geography, the plant life, and the animal life. Once you get past the first 500 pages, though, this novel does get very interesting. It features really the, uh, the series' best antagonist. My next favorite novel is The Painted Caves. This is the final volume in the series. This novel does have some info dumping in the beginning again as Ayla and several others tour uh, the caves that are in the surrounding area that their ancestors have painted realistic depictions of animals. The latter half of the novel shows what impact a new discovery can have on a community of people. I gave this novel four stars. My next favorite novel in the series is The Valley of Horses. In the beginning, this novel is a bit slow. However, it picks up toward the end as the main characters meet one another and interact. I gave this novel four stars. Next is The Mammoth Hunters. This novel explores Ayla as she meets a new group of people and is really a very well done novel. There is a love triangle in this novel that I found really annoying. And that's why I gave this novel four stars instead of five. 
My favorite novel of the series is the first novel in the series, The Clan of the Cave Bear. This novel does everything well. There is a little bit of info dumping in this novel, but it's not as bad as the other novels. So that may put some people off, but really the situation that Ayla finds herself in and the reactions of those around her really, in my opinion, make this novel a must read novel. And here again, as the, the first novel and what I think is the best novel, I really highly encourage other people to read this novel and form your own opinion. You will be able to see some of the weaknesses that all has, all has as a writer, and you will be able to decide for yourself whether or not you should continue with the series. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.